My braid is flashing bird. Jason and I were really good buddies from college. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. And I've been wanting to do this one for a long time, so I am excited to have joining me Leanne from Team Valkyrie. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. So Valkyrie has definitely been a fan favorite for a long time. You've been doing this for a while. Um, definitely, you know, had some different ups and downs. There's for sure been some matches that have been highlights for me. Um, you know, last season was a little, you know, off and on. Um, you, you had a couple of tough losses there, um, but had, you know, a, like a really great win against me. That's one of my favorite matches, like, ever for Valkyrie. It was just fun. And, you know, it really shows what, you know, what the robot's able to do. Of course, you lost a hypershock during their crazy run in the slugfest. But, yep. Again. Um, let's, let's just kind of real quick, you know, summarize what, what that last season was like for you. Yeah. Um, well, it was a lot of hard work. I think it was the first season that I didn't have like any time to actually go see other friends and people around. Um, obviously, we were pretty upset about our, our losses. Um, Hypershock, we knew we couldn't really beat because it seems that every year that we go against them, they work well. And then the years that we don't, they're... Eh. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that kind of sucked. Uh, and then, yeah, going against P1, like P1 is uh, mentored by Fred. And so uh, we kind of knew going into it that we were going to have an interesting looking fight. We've sparred with them before, um, but it was going to be questionable who would win. Um, so we tried all of our new stuff in it. Obviously, we lost. Uh, and yeah, we kind of just had sort of a spiral down after that of just sort of them setting us with uh, other opponents that like we're newer robots which is just kind of mean because we hit hard uh maybe they don't have spares and yeah it was just a really tiring and frustrating season also angle grinding in 105 degrees not fun <laughs> so yeah um it was it was a pretty slog of a year I think like most people that were there various teams like had a more this was hard work uh takeaway than a this was fun takeaway <laughs> yeah absolutely um I mean I, I think that the like Every team has those seasons and it was tough. There were definitely some good things to take away from it, um, you know, and, and kind of looking at those takeaways and speaking of that, um, obviously we know very recently the new season was announced, you know, tickets are on sale and all of that good stuff. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, what is exciting for Valkyrie right now heading into that new season? <laughs> So uh, we we did glow at the end of our tournament run last year. We had two robots ready to go still. Um, so that was a good starting point for this year. We will be back, but because of the short uh, term, uh, like short notice of the season and also just kind of the, the slog of last season kind of hit me at like burnout level. Um, I will not actually be captaining the season. And I'm really, really, really excited to actually put one of my uh, friends slash old roommate uh slash more uh experience than me in combat robotics uh friend lucy who uh is also joining us today Yay, <laughs> surprise! <laughs> yeah so um lucy has an amazing resume she's like finishing her phd right now at mit so uh i don't know if that means she has more time or less time to dedicate to uh being a captain for a robot team but she yeah, she stepped up to both. the plate she's pulled in some new people um i've been like helping like i i own the the team like lc and everything so i've been helping on that side some design work but i've been watching just sort of like new valkyrie team members and like like the cohesion cohesion starting to happen through design reviews and i'm just like really really excited of, of the folks that are joining uh and that lucy recruited Yay, that's so exciting. Um, now, you know, I definitely want to talk about more like, you know, how this came about. Obviously, Lucy, you've been a part of Team Sawblaze and, you know, like what what all came into the decision for you to move over and Captain Valkyrie? Um, well, I think 
uh, I was chatting with Leanne at the end of last season and she was saying, you know, she was pretty burnt out from the season. It was a pretty rough season. And, um, you know, she was talking about stepping down and I, I thought it was such a shame. Like there's so few female led teams. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I, well, I am finishing up my PhD. It means I really shouldn't have time, but, um, grad student life is I finished all my classes. So it's kind of a little bit more flexible. Um, so I can, I not really dictated by hours necessarily. So I get to kind of choose how my time is spent. And I was like, well, you know, I've recently, I like built a 12 pounder for Norwalk and um, ended up winning the December finals. And I was like, you know, maybe this is my time to like ride the combat robotics high and just keep keep going. So I, I offered, um, you know, if you're really looking to step down, I could help out on the team or like I would be willing to step in if you were okay with that. So um, we were kind of talking about it and bouncing around ideas. And then when the season got announced, um, it just seemed like it was kind of the right thing to do. Yeah, and like uh, you had initially uh, offered it as co-captain and I just thought that, uh, production's track record of focusing on co-captain versus just one person is not great and so I figured that, that was also a way to just like like the community the 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 public needs to know the talent that is Lucy <laughs> and just see like there are more like wicked smart uh like en women lady engineers that are involved in the sport that may not be captaining but there are quite a few like I was actually excited this last year there was like a higher percentage of ladies I have one picture that's now spoiler free if I posted it, it has uh everyone that was in the angle grinding area were women except for one person and there was like eight or nine people like five different robots represented it. and I just think that that's like great so yeah should be good and also like yeah I don't have to go to back to Vegas this year which is kind of appealing to me. <laughs> I mean if there was more time if it was like further away then maybe it'd be uh something I would, I would be able to go to more but I decided that I would go focus my energy at a career uh, thing rather than a hobby thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hard balance, you know, because some fans may not think of it in that vein, but I mean, like, you know, everybody has day jobs, every, everybody has things that they do outside of BattleBots, and it can be very hard to balance the two, because um, BattleBots requires a lot of time, even though it only happens once a year, but you really have to continually put the work into the robot and to, to what you're doing. Um, so, you know, Lucy, if you want to talk a little bit about, obviously, we're we're getting really close to the season so there's not a lot of time to do things but what you know what has been done so far or what do you plan to do um with valkyrie kind of leading into to this new season yeah um so as leanne mentioned earlier they ended the season last year with two fully functional robots um and so this year when we went into the season we were like look we have a really limited time schedule there's only about two months before we have to ship so um what's the best way to get through this alive and kind of have some fun while we're at it. Cause I think um, for the uh, Leanne and Alex, um, one of the Valkyrie team members that was still um, continuing from last year, we kind of talked amongst ourselves and decided that we would really like to have a season where we enjoy the season. Um, and we were kind of trying to prioritize that over necessarily like winning. Um, not to say that we're not going to try to win and improve the robot, um, but I think we wanted to make BattleBots an enjoyable experience. And uh, so scope, um, scope limitation was really important. And so we we're like, well, if we have functional robots, we have functional parts and spares from last year. Let's just keep to keep the things that worked well on Val Valkyrie last year, and then just try to make a few improvements that we think we can handle without having to pull like weeks of all-nighters. Um, so Valkyrie's drive um, seemed to work really well last year. And so we're keeping Valkyrie from the outside functionally the same. Um, so still big spinners, still the same chassis, still the drivetrain. Um, but weapon reliability has always kind of been um, Valkyrie's bane of existence. So um, we decided to tackle the problem of weapon reliability and see if we could improve that. Um, so we did. We changed it up a little bit. It's still 
um, tweaked a few things, changed the motors. Uh, and so hopefully our solution this time, while currently untested, uh, is, is gonna be a little bit more reliable. So fingers crossed for that one. Um, oh, we do then, have parts. We do we have, have parts. parts. Testing they just will happen came in soon. today. <laughs> Other teams have been telling me they haven't had time to start doing their CAD yet. So we are doing good. <laughs> yes. Scope management. <laughs> it's so important. <laughs> and it's so easy. Just go, oh, just one more thing. Like, oh, it'll only take like 10 more hours. But then it also like makes a big problem for assembly or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's been really, really great. And also just like design reviews we've been doing has a, how we actually have like healthy debate on like, physics or equation driven uh, decision making. And that's just been really uh, nice because we didn't do that or have the time to do that as much previous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it was, I'm excited. <laughs> it's nice to be able to pick one problem to solve and then spend a little bit more time solving that systematically. Um, and at the beginning of the season, we kind of laid out two timelines that we saw for the team. There was the bare minimum. We basically run last year's robot. Um, and then here's what we do for the like small managed scope uh, solution that we have. And then we picked one date and we were like, if we can't accomplish all these things by this date, we do the bailout plan of running last year's robot. And um, the date came and we were like, looks like we don't have to do the backup plan, which was kind of great. Um, so in addition to that, I think with the team, team captain changeover, we're also doing a little bit of a robot um, makeover. So. The robot will look a little different next year with new logo, t-shirts, like team look, robot look. So we're pretty excited for that. Um, I have a friend, Cynthia Liu, who um, she used to be on Team Overhaul and she has designed some of the logos for um, logos and artistic elements for certain robots in the past. And um, she also did, um, did the art for an indie video game called Evergate. So a little bit of shameless plugging here, um, <laughs> but she's great. And so we're having her do some of the design for the team stuff. Um, it's looking super great so far. So we're really excited to reveal it at filming. That's awesome. I am definitely looking forward to that. Um, I actually want to go back a little bit to something that you mentioned about like the importance of having fun in BattleBox, because I think that that is a really underrated element of a winning strategy. Um, you know, like it, obviously you want to, to be competitive and be thinking about the robot, but honestly, I have found as a, as a viewer that the teams that are having the most fun are often also very successful. Um, I mean, if you just look at like uh, the, the Sin City Slugfest, the bracket where Hypershock just ran the table, they looked like they were having the most fun of anybody. And, you know, I think that translated to the way that, that the robot performed. So I don't know if you found that to be the case, but, you know, I do think that there is something to that. Yeah, I guess like with, with Hypershock, they were actually across us. So it's interesting that you say that because I saw times where they were like very angry stress, not as like high stress as the previous season. There were a couple of moments when like I was told just not even to ask what was going on because they're upset. But uh, yeah, like I, I, I know that usually Will likes to goof off and have fun uh, on camera. And so like also, I mean, it's a little bit easier to have high spirits if you have a successful vertical spinner, throwing it out there. Uh, <laughs> Just, you know, uh, if you wreck robots, like it does become a lot more fun if you're on that trajectory. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If your robot works well, you feel good. You feel good. Robot works well. And it just kind of feeds. Yeah. Robot so, works well, less repair work potentially yep, as long as you don't exactly. get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, another thing that Alex had mentioned was, you know, like when the team works well together, the robot does better. Um, and so one of the things we focused on when we were recruiting a new team was that we wanted everybody to kind of have the same attitude, have the same goals, ultimate goals for the season. And so that way, at least we were all working towards a common goal. And um, I think the group of people that we got are really great. Um, we're all engineers. Um, we're actually majority women. And um, yeah, we're, we're all really excited. That, that is super awesome. Um, I'm excited about that. You know, for anybody that watches the show, 
knows that, that that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, you know, I, I have a daughter, she wants to, to do this someday. And so I think the more women role models that there can be in this sport for, you know, young girls, the better. Um, so that is, that is really great to hear. Um, I'm curious, uh, Lucy, you know, cause obviously you're, you're familiar with, with Valkyrie and, and, you know, kind of what Leanne's done in the past. Is there any one match of Valkyries in the past that is a personal favorite of yours? Um, I mean, I think this one comes off as a little bit cliche, but, um, I think my, my favorite one is is just when Valkyrie just did not stop hitting in the rotator match. Um, that one was extremely satisfying to watch because um, I know like Sabalese had fought a uh, rotator before. I know how reliable that robot is, how well built Victor has made it. And um, it's just, it was incredible just watching Valkyrie tear the front of that robot apart. Uh, it was really so. good. That was favorite. It was, it was a, when it was I need to cheer myself up it is one of the things I pull up on YouTube to watch to feel better <laughs> and now in the space there is a big bolt to show for it yep it's true yeah big trophy uh, so. that, but that yeah is... Hypershock deserved it they deserved most destructive too because like they wrecked us so <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true <laughs> and everybody else and everybody else, else. <laughs> they, they wrecked a lot of people <laughs> oh yeah uh, um yeah and actually um even though this is a little bit outside of battle box but lucy i wanted to ask about your experience in with the the norwalk because um you know a lot of fans love both and i think that that's a good you know starting point for people to get into driving a robot because it's for me, it was a surprise, but it's honestly very much the same. It's a smaller scale, but the excitement is just as big as it is in BattleBots, honestly, for me, after having watched it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Norwalk is great. It's like, in some ways, it's a lot faster paced because everything happens in a day. There's a little bit less to fix because your robot's not quite as large. Um, but uh, when it comes, if you make it deep into the bracket, the end, like the turnaround time between matches gets really fast and it is like very high pressure. Um, and now with all of the production that they have, like interviews and um, everything, like all of the staffing, it's getting kind of like a battle bots, very official feel. Um, but it is, it's great. It's still, there's no, there's a deposit when you register, but you know, it's like free to enter if you show up. Um, and it's, it's really great because you get to try out new ideas more frequently. Um, they happen so often that you're basically like you come off one competition, you just kind of have to build for the next one right away. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's been really great. I think um, I drove at one competition. So the 12 pounder I built, um, David, the team captain of Ribot actually drives that one because initially we made a deal. I was like, well, I'll build this robot, but then I don't want to drive it. Um, driving driving robots was never really my my favorite thing. I had done it before, but I didn't think I was great. I didn't play enough video games growing up. Uh, <laughs> so, but um, so I think after I was talking to Leanne, so with Valkyrie, I will be driving the robot this year, um, and so. Once I knew that back in the May Norwalk, I think I built a three pound mini Valkyrie so I could try to practice driving. Um, and I've been kind of driving that around as practice lately. Um, and so hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I really it'll wish I got fine. to uh, do a few more Norwalks beforehand, but the season just came up so fast that it didn't really get much of a chance. Yeah, because they actually they have their their next event this weekend. Um, so I'll be judging. Oh, uh, <laughs> second shift. I'm taking over for Tweety because I'm West Coast and he's over the pond. So like across the pond. There we go. Uh, so yeah, like it's just a wicked long slog for him, and he has to stay up till basically dawn. And so I'm going to step in at some point to take over for him. I think at like two p.m. So. Yeah, yeah. I be unfortunately good. have a wedding to be at next weekend, so I can't um, 
can't crack describing, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I've been told that like, you know, with, with the large robots with more inertia, if you get used to driving the little ones, um, the big ones kind of feel like things are moving in slow motion. Um, I don't know. I feel like when you stand at the box and like the lights go down and you hear the buzzer is like your heart rate just kind of skyrockets. And then like, even as not a driver, I have yep. like PTSD from standing yep. by the box. Yep. Like, <laughs> I'm like sitting here trying to mentally imagine what it's going to be like having to be the driver and I like I'm sure it's nothing I imagine is quite going to be the same can confirm I have higher blood pressure because of stress because of battle thoughts I'm sure <laughs> like just you saying that I just thought of it and it just gave me the like <gasps> like yeah. the blood lunge feeling of like oh god oh god oh god oh god please let this go okay like it just happens yeah. every time because it's like a worry about your robot as well as just like how you do I think it's more just like making sure your robot works that's where my anxiety mm. comes from but yeah that it's like trauma. moment when they turn on the lights af like right before they do the buzzer countdown, that is always slightly longer than it really <laughs> you think it needs to be, is the scariest moment, I think, in that opening sequence. Yeah, that, that leads into a, to a question that I ask everybody. So I, I, I have to ask you as well. So now, being the captain of Valkyrie, you know, new season, new robot and everything. Who do you want to fight? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Lucy, I've been do you so want to busy fight? working on this robot? I haven't like even thought about the fighting part even. <laughs> uh, that is a good question. Yeah, I don't even think I know. Like, I know, I know we're, who we're planning for, but who knows if that ever happens. Like we've had a gigabyte plan for a couple of years and still haven't faced them. Mm -hmm. uh, huge, same thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd take Captain Shredderator. I mean, giving you an idea. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I could take that. The big horizontal hits are always kind of fun. You come together and everyone flies apart maybe potentially less launching into the ceiling <laughs> or the shame shelf or the shame shelf <laughs> <laughs> is, yeah. is that what it's called <laughs> that's what I call it like I know there's one of the names before the season last year that was one of the names going around and for me that's what stuck so <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know No, there definitely could be some interesting matchups. Malice, maybe. Mm -hmm. I could take Malice money. could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm blanking. I've not thought about this question. I really should. <laughs> <laughs> that that is okay. You would have to you have to get get a little bit of you know time under your belt and and have those few fights and then. I think sometimes, you know, because I've, I've talked to a number of teams that are, you know, rookie teams or, you know, newer, like applying or what have you. And, you know, I think sometimes it takes, takes those first couple of fights before you get an idea of, you know, what you'd like to see the robot do and who you would like to match up against. So it could be really interesting, um, you know, depending on, on who you get. Um, it's coming up pretty soon so you know it, it won't be too long yeah yeah I think I would feel better choosing when I test all of the parts that just came in and see if there were a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah so um I mean what are what are you looking most forward to Lucy at you know stepping into this new role for next year like what you know what what is exciting for you right now thinking about that um, hmm. Well, I think it's going to be a very different experience from like what I've had for BattleBots before. Like I've been on a couple of teams and I think it's not just the team captain thing. I think the, I'm really excited about the group of people that we have for filming. Um, I think we're all pretty excited. We're there to have fun. We're there to get the robot to work. Um, and I think uh, we do have a lot of people on the team that are pretty new to combat, um, but it's also having been in combat and 
feeling some of the jadedness set in over the years. Um, I It's really nice seeing people that are completely new be super excited about all of it. And I think it kind of brings a lot of the excitement back for the people that have slowly become jaded. So it kind of reminds us about why we got into this in the first place, why we love it. And it's, it feels new again, which is nice. Yeah, I know I'll have more FOMO before the end. Like I was, I could potentially make like the last weekend and that's pretty much it. And I'm just like, that doesn't make sense with how expensive plates are right now. So I'm probably not going might FOMO it really hard and go but yeah I think that that's really that's a good point like I didn't start to like enjoy uh battle bots again until we started working together and sort of just seeing what like the new teammates were coming up with or design reviews where I got to see sort of who we have and what they can they're capable of and I uh I know that there will be a lot of good camaraderie when y'all are there and I won't be and I will FOMO <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure the, the memes weekend. will still come on Slack. The last weekend. <laughs> I'm, see, the first weekend I'm supposed to be traveling now, but we'll see. But yeah, it's a uh, like I, I'm still trying to figure out. Practically speaking, I won't be going just because it doesn't make sense for time. But we'll see. I might uh, go back on that word. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be cool if you could make it for the last weekend. Um, this this will be my first time at going nice. to BattleBots Live, and that that is when I will be there. So. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the, the last weekend just like is it makes it's easier for the, the I have a wedding in the middle of it, and that's like mm. the key thing is like traveling east coast, might as well stay there. Uh and if I didn't set the two up, I wouldn't go. But I did, so I am. <laughs> so uh it feels kind of bad, like, oh yeah, the story, but she's not here. Uh it just yeah, once once in a lifetime kind of stuff. But it should be good. And also the weather will be better than last year. So oh, yeah. I'm so excited for it to not be 115. Uh huh. Like that, it, the heat breaks at 95 to 100 at night. Like it does feel a lot better when the sun's not beaming down. But like, yeah, there's yeah. been rumors of potentially having a dirt pit as like one of the tent bottoms, and so I'm like, yep, I'm glad I'm not going. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably figure it out before then. I'm just saying, like that's a potential. There's a lot of uh, things last year that didn't go to plan for them, I think. And uh, I would like to see some of those things not repeated. <laughs> yeah. And Leanne, I'm really curious to get your take on this because, you know, obviously you've been doing this a while, but like, you know, in addition to the changes with Valkyrie, there's a lot of things, you know, either through the, the grapevine that, you know, we maybe can't talk about or things that we can talk about, like the fact that Tombstone is not going to be there next year. Um, like just a lot of changes and a lot of like teams coming back together or like teams changing, like all kinds of things. Do you think that's like an exciting thing for BattleBots or do you think it's like sad or do you think it's a little bit of both? Yeah, I think that there's something to be said for variation and also like like sort of by um, expanding the field or, or having uh, like more opportunities for new folks or maybe a changing of the guard like us, you are able to just get to know more of the people that are behind the robots. Um, so I, I think it's great. Um, I, I was going to hear that Ray wasn't going to come to you. It gave me more consolation feels about not going because like I, I look up to him like we met in 2016 and just sort of hit it off as friends. So uh, I should just make the the hike out to where he lives out here. But um, yeah, I, I think that it's it's really good to like and some of the folks that had one year down, like I know Switchback is like very determined to do better this year. And I'm good friends with Greg. We went to school together. Um, so like just sort of seeing like some of the newer teams are like, okay, last year was like trial year. This year is going to be better. Um, uh, I'm excited to see like how that goes. And then some of the newer teams and uh, some of the confidence some of them have, I'm curious to see if that like ends up being worth the confidence or if they have, you know, a one through three year R&D cycle, like a lot of others do. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm curious to see how it goes. Uh, and like, I feel like last year I didn't like, our fight before Triple Crown, I didn't even know what they looked like. I had no time to walk the the route, like the whole entire uh, pits to see like what robots looked like. So there's that part of it. Like, I just have to keep reminding myself that I didn't get that last year. I can expect with how many hours of TV that BattleBots is aiming to film, I will not get to again this year if I was there. So at least I'll be able to see it when it is on TV. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it should be really good. I think it's, 
it'll, it'll be a nice uh, way to showcase some folks that are, have been working on teams for a couple of years. And, like, not exactly as Lucy. I think Lucy's the only one that, like, is switching a team and becoming captain of another, like, established team. Uh, there are some new teams with captains from builders from other teams. But, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it'll be uh, – good for everyone there i know some international folks are able to come again that weren't uh last year so and then they're they're one of the teams i'm sad i won't be able to see but uh yeah my my uh partner suggested like hey how about you just start visiting the places these people live rather than like busting your uh butt and going ahead and, and working wicked hard and then not able to actually see the people that you're there for just go plan trips to europe or to like back to Boston get everyone together we went up to Seattle in July we we're able to see some builders up there like that's that sort of maybe that's the strategy <laughs> yeah hey there's nothing wrong with that um and another thing that I'm curious to just like ask both of you because you've both been a part of teams and battle bots for a while so I mean you're neither of you are really super new to this in general but um what are you know for you some changes that you'd like to see from battle bots um you know whether it be you know rule adjustments or changes to the arena or just different like initiatives that you'd like to see um you know because people people do watch this show and they may see some things and maybe they'll they'll make some changes <laughs> uh i don't know if you have things off the top of your head lucy but i know i can think of one <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, rules on safety of magnets. So magnets are a new introduction to the game of like a lot of downforce, make it harder to shove a robot. Um, but some of the the magnet forces that folks are using could hurt. Like like could get if you get underneath in between the floor and that you're gonna break a finger. Um, and I think that there needs to be some sort of regulation on uh, like how much force is allowed. Um, that also coming from a horizontal spinner that can't use magnets because our weapon is directly in the path of everywhere we would put it. Uh, I am also, I do admit that that does sound shameless when I say that, but from a safety side, like if uh, there there's concerns about fire and electronics and current and everything. And I think that that to underestimate how much, like I've pinched my, my hand pretty good with magnets before that were only like 20 pounds force, like two inch by one inch, brick uh and so i just like don't want to see that accident happen and just be like i've been staying so that's like i think the main one <laughs> for me um i think for me potentially i think i noticed this most when i was re-watching the season as it was airing is just the there's some inconsistencies and in calls for um, like count outs and what counts as a count out and it's kind of different in every different competition like Norwalk does it differently from BattleBots which is fine but I think BattleBots within itself sometimes is a little bit different and I think clarifying all of that would be a little bit better because I know there's a lot of controversy in judges judges decisions or whether or not people get counted out um, it's just everybody has a better time with a competition that is clean fair the rules are yeah. all understood by the people and with no room for interpretation yeah refs talking to each other during a match could go a long way uh yeah. our p1 fight we were supposed to have a double count out but one of the refs wasn't listening to his mic so judge decision we lose whatever uh <laughs> makes for continuous tv but like yeah we we we're kind of bummed with that so I, I think that that would be good crab walking make it a, a strict rule set and follow it every time Mm -hmm. don't let certain robots you like better to put on air uh get longer crab walking time than like a newer robot or something like give everyone the same amount of time or don't mm -hmm. yeah I like I get that it's difficult I think a lot of stuff is going on at the time there's a lot of shouting during the fight sometimes um and like a lot of loud noises but just better ways of efficient communication for like the refs staffing between teams all of that would help a lot yeah. yeah, and I think I think from from having had conversations with with both John Remar and the the BattleBots judges, I think that a lot of that stuff is going to change for the next season, which is definitely very positive. Um, because I mean, it's 
I, I can only imagine how hard it is for the builders when things like that happen, because even watching it as a fan, the, the, the round of 32 last year was at times difficult for me to watch and to digest. And I think that the slugfest overall was a lot better. Um, I, I enjoyed it a lot more. I was able to enjoy it instead of sitting there dwelling on like these bad calls. So um, I, I would like to personally see more of that. So that actually brings up something that I had as a hypothesis from last year <laughs> is that because we were filming, we were filming both in parallel. Like you have the world tournament first, once the round 32 starts, okay, now we're going to work on Slugfest as well. And so by having that sort of like, okay, chaos balancing of schedules and who's in, who's out, who's in which, and like that just, like, I, I feel like that that's part of why like the, the world tournament was really rushed through so you could get to the finals and give that build space time in between like quarterfinals, semi, final. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of just made it more chaotic having the two. And so Slugfest is actually easier because you're just like, okay, well, I'm out of the one, so now I can focus on this one. And that like is a little bit easier of a, a bite to swallow, I think, than both at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. That's my thought. I don't know if <laughs> you felt that way at all last year, Lucy. You usually go further in the, um, the tournament. Well, I don't Sobles know. Well, it means that um, like Sobles has never participated in any of the bounties or slugfests because they either make it just far enough or like too far to be able to be uh, to participate in those. Um, so I think it's a little bit different. I think it seems like, at least if you're in the slugfest tournaments, you have to turn it around a lot faster because you have so many more fights to do. Um, but I don't know. There's also the chance that because it's not the main tournament, maybe you're a little bit less stressed and you're like actually able to focus a lot better because you don't have the like main tournament stress looming over you. But yeah, you know, once you're done that, then you're out and then you can do a grudge for fun or whatever. And that's that's like that's like a consolation prize. Like that's what we did. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> there's, there's, there's definitely, um, you know, a lot of, of excitement, obviously, for the next season. Um, you know, I'm excited to see Valkyrie in this new format. Obviously, Leanne, you will be greatly missed. Um, but I, I think Lucy is very capable. I am excited, you know, to see what, what you're going to do with this robot, yeah. like beyond excited. So... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm very excited. I hope it works. You know, <laughs> it don't let me down, Lucy. <laughs> it'll, work until it works. <laughs> it'll be fine. I mean, we'll find out like what this weekend or sometime in the next like week, week and a half. Like, yeah, there'll be like that information. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a, a game plan in like two ish weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, great. Well, I am, I'm very excited. Um, you know, I'm sure that the fans will be excited as well. Um, I, you know, appreciate you both coming on the show and revealing this big mystery secret um, that is very exciting. Um, but yeah, so everybody kind of, you know, keep an eye on what's going on with Valkyrie. And I'm sure that there are a lot of exciting things to come. There sure are. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much for having us on and, and yeah. letting us uh go back and forth. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. 